Bonjour, mon nom est Elvi. Um, as you can see from the title, we're going to get into another album review today. I will say for this review, it isn't a request like always. For this one, this is actually a review that um, I wanted to do. <laughs> because although I am happy that people request albums, I am. I'm very happy when people do that. But um, occasionally, I want to throw in something. So... <laughs> So for this album, this album is actually a request I wanted to do, and of course it's of always of Ayu, so yeah. So we're going to review Hamasaki Ayumi's Rainbow album. And for me, this album had a lot of firsts for me, because for one, this was the first album where I believe Hamasaki actually contributed English lyrics to her songs. Secondly, I believe this was the first album, well... I'm sorry, music videos, where she actually actually started to dance. Because any IU fan, if you're a fan of IU, you guys know that IU isn't really much of a dancer. She's more along the lines of interpreting her message within the songs. That's with IU. She doesn't really doesn't really dance. She more she likes um to show her a message within her songs, most of the time. So um. With um, before this period, she didn't really dance, but this was I believe the video "Real Me" was the first video where she started to actual dance. And I remember when I first saw it, I was like, "Ooh!" I was like, "I was so happy." <laughs> and although um, her dance moves are basic, because uh, as I said, I use not really much of a dancer. Um, when it comes to dancing, I really rely on Boa or Kodakumi or um, Amuro Namie for that. But um, although her dance moves are basic, it was a big step. Um, especially, at least I thought so, within her career. And thirdly, this was the first Hamasaki Ayumi album I actually bought from Ayu. Although I wouldn't say the they had they were the first songs I've heard from her, this was the first album I actually bought from her. And this was the first album that actually created my love and respect for Hamasaki Ayumi. And because of that, I'll treasure this album always. Oh yeah, before I start anything. <laughs> Sorry guys. As I said before, this was the first album where she actually contributed English lyrics. Because before that, her lyrics were entirely in Japanese. The only English I believe she placed within the song was the actual title of the song. And all of which was an extremely unusual thing for a very popular J-pop artist to do. Because usually within J-pop, J-pop artists almost always put... English within their songs. They always just throw like that one English um, phrase or sentence within their song. But before this period, Hamasaki didn't do that. She just actually just wrote everything straight in Japanese. And um, I think one of the reasons why she did that, maybe she felt like she couldn't um, get her message out that way. Maybe um, she felt limited by the English language because maybe she felt like she could um, convey her message better in her native tongue. And if that's the case, I do understand that because, um, like, um, it's like myself, because, like, um, I'm flattered that you guys think my English is good. I'm flattered. I really am. I'm really happy when you guys say that. If I had to be honest, um, as, like, I'm pretty sure you guys know, um, English isn't my native tongue. Sometimes I can, I struggle with it because al um, although my English, I guess, is okay, and I can, I'm good with it after years of practice, um, I will say um, I do struggle with it. Um, there's some words and maybe I can't, um, I can't convey, like it's hard to put my thoughts into this if I try to in English. So if that's the case, I understand why Hamasaki felt that way because it is hard to convey a message if it's be if it's so much better to put it in your native tongue. So I understand if that was the case with Ayu. So I can um, empathize with her with for that. This album established great character within Hamasaki's style. For one, she used her abilities of creating music to her advantage because she realized she can still sing about her personal feelings while at the same time sharing universal ideas and commentary around the world around her as she took her music into a, a new, unexpected direction. Secondly, um, as always, this album has great lyrics that talk about the concepts of freedom, hope, dreams, sorrow, and strength. 
And that's another reason why this album is a very um, solid album within her career. Okay, so let's get started on reviewing Rainbow because I'm rambling on too much. <laughs> the first track is Everlasting Dream. To be honest, I consider this to be my favorite album introduction of all time. Although it's quite simple, I can't help but fall in love with it because of its gorgeous arrangement. I love how peaceful it sounds with the synth elements along with these dazzling sound effects. It's very surreal, almost dreamlike if I had to find the right word for it. But what I love most about this introduction is when she, the part where she starts to sing because when she starts to sing, that's where the beauty starts to rise. Although her vocals are quite airy, I think that's what makes the, it beautiful to me because I like how her I like her vocals this way. I love that simple and powerful empowering message she's stating over and over again. My Japanese is a bit rusty, but I believe it trans I believe she's saying something along the lines of I'm giving it to you. This box of everlasting dreams. I think that's what she's saying. But overall, it's a fantastic way to open this album, and it really emphasizes the theme of the rainbow because of its mystical feel. Next song is We Wish. I'll admit, I wasn't the biggest fan of this song when I first heard it, like ever, because I was really turned off by IU's vocals right here because. Ugh, they weren't really that good right here. And I didn't listen to it for the longest time until I came across an album review by the YouTube user um, Emi Hikari, which you all should subscribe to because she makes wonderful videos. But um, her perspective and endearment for this song really changed the opinions I had on it originally. And because of that, I gave this song the chance it deserves. And I will say from that, this is a wonderful song. I know that's totally contradicting everything I said, but... <laughs> the song itself is incredible because it features these incredible arrangements to it that really aids the awesomeness it carries. And I really love how it's backed up with this catchy chorus. I really like that chorus. It's really awesome to sing along to. I also like how it incorporates this mystical vibe like the introduction did, but this one has a more aggressive feel to it. This song is very um, interesting in its own right. I also like how she aids the English process within this song because throughout the song, she doesn't really speak it throughout the verses. You hear her in the background, I guess they would call it like the backup chorus. You hear her, um, her saying, we wish, over and over again in the background, and I thought that was a really nice touch they did. And my most favorite part of the song has to be the bridge. Hold on, I'm gonna skip to that part because that part is like the most epic part of the song. I love how it carries this almost epic vibe, and I really wasn't sure because when I first saw I was like, ooh, what is this doing? Because I don't know, it really incorporates this like intense magical feeling and then when it reaches that electric guitar, I was like, wow, because it's really loaded with these awesome synth elements and it was really cool the way she um, structured it throughout it and it was really nice, I really like this. Overall, this is an excellent song with wonderful aspects surrounding it. I can only kick myself for not liking it any sooner. Gosh, what the hell is wrong with me? <laughs> The next song is Real Me. This was another song that represented another drastic change within Hamasaki's style. Like the other song, it marked the beginning of in her incorporation of putting English into the lyrics within her song. For this song, I thought it was, it was a better way to showcase that factor because she writes this song about, it's like a female empowerment type of song, and it was really cool. Personally, I think this is one of her best female empowerment songs because it has this cool futuristic tone to it that where it thrives with this sense of awesomeness. And the verses were pretty good because it had they have like this like dragging vibe and it like holds out to this awesome chorus and the chorus is so cool. <laughs> Sorry, 
But um, I really love this chorus. I I always look forward to singing this chorus. I could be anywhere in the car, walking to school. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm just like grooving. I don't care. This is so cool. The English she implied within the chorus really made is what really made this song worthwhile because of its simple and catchy beat. I also like how within this song she uses frequent amount of English. Literally in every verse there's at least one line in English and I really enjoyed how she did that although her English wasn't the best at the time it's still cool <laughs> oh gosh overall I really did enjoy this track because it did showcase I use growth as an artist quite well so awesome the next song is free and easy Again, this was another song that showcased another change within Hamasaki's style of music. It has this long orchestra opening that really incorporates this sense of sadness within me because of its serious undertone to it. I don't know, that made it so much more agusty and more intense to me. It soon follows with this piano that brings light to the atmosphere that this song was trying to create. It really brings the serious light to the undertone of this song. When Ayu starts to sing on that first verse, I'll admit, when I first heard it, I felt, and I still do, I felt this sense of peacefulness that swarmed through me. And I'll admit, when I first heard this song, I was going to sleep, and this part of it soothed me, and it was helping me go to sleep because it was very, beautiful and very I don't know just very soothing to hear and I was going to sleep when I first heard this song when I like first heard it I was going to sleep and I'll admit I was just like uh, going to sleep you guys and then BAM <laughs> I'll admit when I first heard that that scared the crap out of me I woke up when I heard that and I was like oh my gosh because the peacefulness it shattered drastically after that of course, the true gem of this song lies within its chorus. It just has this aggressive and a reverting atmosphere. Such perfection. Despite my love for this chorus, I will admit her voice does get a little whiny halfway through it. Because it's just, like, she sings that part like, Zuta. Like, that, uh, that part is just like really screechy and very whiny and just like, ugh. But despite um, that dent of this song, I still consider this song to be one of her most unique songs because it features both rock and ballad elements that truly demonstrates it as a ballad with a twist. The next track is Hard Place. The album steps into this mint tempo that seems to focus on nothing but this guitar within the arrangement. It does feature some light music within the beginning before transforming into this vibrant rock song. For this song, I will say this song is highly underrated because most people seem to ignore this song since it's over six minutes long. And to be honest, I don't think that's a decent excuse at all. Because if I had to be honest, I will say this song is a hidden gem within her discography based on its arrangement and lyrics. I love the lyrics to this song, you guys. In this song, she talks about the struggles of growing up and the ability to acquire true freedom when facing the hardships of life. I don't know about you guys, but lyrics like this easily relate to me, especially throughout the struggles I faced within my own life. And I don't know, it's just, it's really hard to say in words. I'm sorry, you guys. It's just, this song really features a lot of things I really love about it and that I can always cherish. And I also like the fact how she uses the English lyrics within it to emphasize the true message. You know, I really like that distorted feel you hear on her vocals when she does sing those English parts. Overall, this was an empowering song that reminds me greatly of my love for IU. We finally reached the album's first actual ballad. This song, it features elements of a winter ballad, but the tone of it reeks of this simple yet amuted vibe. 
From reading reviews, it seems this song gets a lot of hate, and I will admit I don't understand why, because this is a gorgeous song. I'll admit, her English isn't the best here, but I can always easily overlook that because I've always had a soft spot for the song based off its lovely arrangement and the overall emotion it has. This was such a magnificent ballad. I love the fact that it features this piano as the main instrument because it makes the overall atmosphere so much more beautiful even though the ballad itself isn't exactly happy based on its lyrical content. Still, I love this song very much despite that. The next song is Hanabi. I've always had a certain love for this song. I always have. And based on events that happened to me last year, um, I can proudly say that my love for this song has grown tremendously. The song itself is not your typical ballad because it combines these soft yet cute chimes of a music box along with the uses of four binding sinks and percussion. This song features a lot of emotion with an IU's vocals, and I can truly say I appreciate this song because it makes the atmosphere so much more real. The song talks about constant remembrance, which is one of the reasons I can fully cherish this song. Based on the lyrical content of this song, I always think of my grandmother, and um, my grandmother, she was a very special person to me, and um, she got taken away from me last year, and this song greatly reminds me of all the memories we had, and it's so... Uh, shit, I'm sorry guys, um, sorry, <laughs> um, the point is, um, I will always love this song, because, um, even though the lyrics to it are sad, there's something that I always have in my heart to keep the memory of my grandmother alive. So, it's a very beautiful song. Sorry guys, I'm a little teary-eyed at the moment and my glasses are really blurry. Let me fix this real quick and then we'll get right to the review. This was the first interlude for this album. For the longest time, this was my favorite interlude from Tasku. Tasku, 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 sorry, um, but, uh, this, uh, for the longest time, this was my favorite interlude, until I heard tasking, and then that just blew everything else away, but, <laughs> um, I love how fast-paced it is while featuring these music box effects, and I really like how it does that, because it incorporates this magical feel to it. It's really pretty. And I like the fact that it features these rock elements that went along nicely with IU chanting in the background. And it's really lovely. <laughs> Overall, a great interlude with magnificent effects. The next track is Everywhere Nowhere. I'll admit this beginning gave me the creeps when it first opened with this ominous sound that features IU's mysterious voice speaking up in English. And I thought that was really creepy when I first heard it because it was just like, ugh. The freedom we have. The choices we make. The sacrifices we pay make life so complicated. I'll admit I didn't like this song that much in the beginning, but I will say it has grown on me a lot over these past few years. It's a song that's pretty dance oriented that features these some really heavy dance beat. I will say for this song, although it's quite like very disturbing I guess when you first hear it, the chorus was very infectious despite its dark sounding verses. Sorry, but um, it was this was a really nice song, and then plus her vocals were very creative here because they verged from deep to high within this tune. The guitars here were also a great touch for the addition within the popish elements. Overall, this was a nice dance song for this album, although it might not interest you in the beginning because it does give off this really weird feel. So I understand if you wouldn't like it, but but if you do feel that way, um. Give it a few listens. Who knows, you may like it in the end, so. The next song is July 1st. 
This track continues the trend of upbeat dance songs that this album has been incorporating so far. This song has always been a favorite of mine, and it's always one of the first songs I listen to when summer arrives. <laughs> Oh my gosh, because it, I will, I, it does, because every time when July 1st comes, ooh, let's listen to July 1st, that's what I always do. It's like a silly tradition of mine I always did. But um, on serious matter now, I love how simple it is when, within the beginning with these acoustic guitars that goes really well with Ayu's vocals and really well with her persona, I want to say. But it's very pretty, and then it starts to take off like a rocket, and it's just... It's really cool, and then who knew that it would lead to this magical chorus that I'll forever remember. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, I really love how her vocals sound within the chorus because they're so, they are so upbeat and they're so happy and you can actually feel that happiness. And it really warms um, at least my heart. So um, overall, this is a fantastic song and I'll, and I'll never get tired of listening to it. The next track is Dolls. I will always love this song. I love the sound effects she plays within this because it sounds more ocean themed more than anything else. And like Over, it comes in the form of a winterish type of ballad with lots of piano notes and chimes and even this harp if you really listen for it. It's a bit more slower and has more motion to it, at least I think so. Her vocals here sound quite sad but for some reason, I thought it aided the melody to it quite well because it had it really has like again this satin feel that you can't help but grasp to and hold to your heart. And the strings throughout this are pretty intense throughout the verses, but the seek elements that were applied here were just magnificent. Oh my gosh, you guys need to hear. Sorry guys, it's just, I always get hypnotized by how beautiful this really is. I adore listening to this. It has such a mystical and soothing quality to it that greatly reminds me of the introduction. I like how within this, I can detect most of the music here in the form of strings and a piano and a harp. I don't understand why this interlude gets so much hate because it does provide this beautiful ethereal sound that does showcases the album's shift of change really well so I I don't understand but that's everyone else's opinion but overall I thought this was a pretty interlude. The next song is Voyage. I have mixed feelings about this ballad. I mean I love it as much as everyone else does because this is one of her famous ballads and I can see why it's so famous. But the one thing about this ballad that truly bothers me is her vocals. In this ballad, she seems to be using her vibrato a bit too much here. And I will admit that's one of the negative things about it and it's the reason why this song has been made fun of so many times. <laughs> and like, right here. Like, that part is just... Ugh. It pull it um, turns me off from listening to it sometimes, but the arrangement here That was the most this is part of the song I will always look forward to um, listening to because this is the part of the song that That I always will love because of its beautiful choice of instruments here the music and lyrics go really well together, too And that's just one of the things I really like about the song despite her um, using her vibrato a bit too much here, this really is a beautiful song, and again, I can see why it's so famous, because it is a ballad that I believe is worthy of its, um, famous number, because, um, it does have this, um, well worth quality to it, and the chorus is, is just as explosive and it's incredible. <laughs> Sorry, but, um... Other than that main factor with her vibrato, I still consider this to be a heavenly ballad. As much as I adore this song, I will say there are some problems with it. For one, it gets really repetitive because she repeats the same thing over and over again and it's just, it gets a little boring after a while. Secondly, it 
really doesn't stand out amongst her other ballads. Because of that, I really deem this ballad as forgettable. Thirdly, I use vocals don't really reach any true highlight here. She sounds truly flat here, and that can make listening to this almost unbearable sometimes. But despite all those negative factors about it, I truly do love this song. I really do. Because it features these beautiful bells that create this sweet aroma that's almost impossible to ignore, especially when it reaches the chorus. That is so beautiful right there. The chorus and the musical effects that they place here outshines everything else within this song. Although this song isn't as strong as her other ballads, I will say that it does have its moments of strength. It does provide this soothing atmosphere that I can come to appreciate. Plus, I always listen to it every Christmas time since it's a Christmas song, so... <laughs> That was very embarrassing, but I love this song so much, you guys. Oh my goodness. This song always manages to sweep me off my feet every time I hear this song. I love the fact that this song screams the summer vibe. It features these um, tremendous sound effects from the hand clapping to the background chanting to these electric guitars and great vocals. But I can see why this song sold a million copies because this is a really cool song. I'll admit when I first heard this song, I will admit I did not like it, but that clapping got to me. <laughs> it really did because this really is a good song and it's so fun to sing along to every summer. Like you're just in the car just singing it to the top of your lungs and I want to learn this dance to this song. So, Brillante Productions, you gotta teach me. <laughs> Overall, this is a great song because it's so upbeat and catchy. Just when I thought this album was over, seconds later, this song arrives. I remember I always wondered why there was a plus sign added to Independent because um, at first I thought maybe they, um, it was a bit more longer, but now I see it was because it was a hidden track, like her song's Flower Garden off her I Am album. And even though it's a hidden song, that doesn't make it any less bad because I do love this song. I enjoy listening to this very much because it again has this fun summer's vibe that I can't help but bop my head to every time I hear it. <laughs> it has a great chorus that's easy to get up and jam to. And although there is a lot of ad-libbing within this, I will say it's very tolerable. <sighs> This is a really gossip song. Either way, I still thought that this was a nice song to end the album with a bang, so. This album was a magical sync paradise. I love how these songs incorporated some incredible sync elements that aided with the creative process within this album. The overall sound within this album maintained a array of genres that made it very diverse and therefore incorporated the theme of the rainbow really well because of its use of mystical sounds along with a touch of paradise. And here is the Rainbow album. This has to be one of my most favorite albums too when it comes to album art. She looks so beautiful here. Here's the back. Here is the front. Very beautiful too. This as well. Very gorgeous picture. This was a very creative thing they did here with this because um, I, you think that's going to be it, but it opens up. And it opens up into this. And that was very pretty too. This has to be one of, this has to be my most favorite one out of the whole booklet. I love how colorful it looks here. It's just so beautiful here. Overall, this album was very much like a rainbow because each song was magical, unique, and colorful. There were so many different styles that she laid out here and, it's, and to be honest, that's one of the reasons why it's very impossible for me to pick the best one out of all of them because she processed them all very well here. I'm rather glad this was one of the first albums that made me fall in love with IU. 
because the mixture of both ballads and upbeat songs really created this solid substance within this album that showcased her maturity within these lyrics and that's one of the reasons why I will always love this album. I recommend this album to anyone who's fond of the beloved IU. The creation she displayed within this tru truly shows the uniqueness in the evolution of our IU and that itself is what makes this album worth every penny. So that was my review for this album. I do hope you guys enjoyed the interpretations I have on it because I do know I don't always make sense all the time, so. <laughs> Again, thank you guys for watching this video and I really appreciate everyone's um, comments and likes I've been getting so far for most of my videos. I really appreciate it because it's because of you guys why I'm still doing these. So for the next review I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into my request. This was just a album that I wanted to do because this album is very special to me and I wanted to showcase its real originality and value to me. As I said before, the next review I will do will be a request. So as always, if anyone has requests they want me to throw on um, do, just leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it eventually. Um, I do hope that my the next review I will do will come soon because I will admit it's rather hard to find the time to do videos now because I'm in since I'm in school again. Yeah, but um, I will um, do reviews whenever I can. So as I said, the next review should be coming hopefully as quick as possible. So until next time, bye guys.